Welcome to a chimeric new episode of- You know what? Nope, that's two on the nose. Welcome to an intermingled new episode of the Demonic Compendium, the show where I discuss the mythology, design, and game history of your favorite Megami Tensei demons. Some things just work better in sets of threes, like chocolate, vanilla, and strawberry ice cream, for instance. Or lions, goats, and snakes, apparently. And you're about to learn why, because today, we're talking about Chimera. Chimera is a monster from ancient Greek mythology, and like many other monsters, was the child of the Titan Typhon and the snake mother Echidna. Among Chimera's siblings are the two-headed hound, Orthrus, and their older brother, the three-headed hound, Cerberus. Some tales also say she and her brother Orthrus fathered children of their own, including the Sphinx and the Nemean Lion, but other tales claim Echidna was the mother of them as well. Unlike her siblings though, Chimera wasn't a hound, but instead was a lion with a long snake for a tail, and a fire-breathing goat head growing out of her torso. There are several other creatures in mythology that are made up of multiple animal parts, but Chimera is such an iconic one that the word Chimera itself is used when describing multiple things mixed together, or in examples of genetic manipulation of plants or animals. The actual story of Chimera herself is similar to that of a lot of Greek monsters. She was killed by some powerful legendary hero. Chimera was terrorizing the town of Lycia, and so at the request of the king, the brave hero, Bellerophon, was called in to destroy her. Since it was nearly impossible to get close to Chimera because of her powerful fire breath attacks, Bellerophon rode the winged horse Pegasus and shot Chimera from the sky. In some stories, Bellerophon attached a block of lead to his arrow and shot Chimera in the throat, so that when she used her fire breath, the lead melted and she suffocated. Which, I guess answers a question I never knew I had over whether or not she could breathe through all three heads. In some cultures, the different animal parts of Chimera represented the different seasons throughout the year, and occasionally Chimera is also depicted as part dragon instead of part snake, or just adds the dragon on top of the original three. It's speculated that Chimera's fire-breathing abilities and the geographical location she terrorized was birthed from volcanic activity near that area. Chimera's compendium entry from Persona 5 Royal refers to her as part lion, part goat, and part snake. This creature originally represented the seasons. In Greek mythology, it was viewed as a violent monster born of Typhon and Echidna. Design-wise, Chimera's most well-known depiction in the franchise looks exactly like it's supposed to. No joke, the design of Chimera has pretty much been established for thousands of years. Whether it was Homer's description of the beast from the Iliad in the 8th century, claiming it to be lion-fronted and snake-behind, a goat in the middle, or even the classic art piece, the Chimera of Arezzo, which is supposedly from around 400 BCE. The Chimera is a lion, with a snake tail, and a goat head growing awkwardly out of the middle of the torso. And Kaneko's Chimera is... that. Sure, it's a bit more fun on the show when I can be like, Kaneko actually based this demon off of the Taco Bell dog. But not every demon needs to reinvent the wheel, and Chimera is just a classic solid design that stays loyal to its source. It works. Though the original Shin Megami Tensei design of Chimera was this blue, sort of lion-looking thing that had the snake tail, but was missing the goat head, instead opting for wings and a single horn. It's a bit less faithful, and is probably for the best that this version didn't stick around. Lastly, there's the Devil Children design of Chimera, who appeared in Devil Children White Book. This cute little lion cub had horns and goat feet, and as it grew and evolved, would eventually come to better resemble the more iconic beast we know and love. As far as game history goes, Chimera has been in the franchise since pretty much the beginning, and has acquired a few memorable appearances in that time. In Shin Megami Tensei Nocturne, Chimera will actually speak with her siblings, and her conversation with Cerberus about why she isn't a guard dog like they are makes me laugh every time. Chimera appears as a boss demon not once, but twice in Shin Megami Tensei Liberation D2. First appearing as the final boss fight in Chapter 4, being summoned by the mysterious man Jabo Kakryo, 
and again as a boss in Chapter 5, this time being summoned by nameless Feng Shui mercenaries. Chimera also plays a small role in Shin Megami Tensei 4, and must be fought in the challenge quest Four Heads, Four Wings. And in Shin Megami Tensei 4 Apocalypse, Chimera will actually evolve into her older brother, Orthrus, at level 50. Though in certain other titles, Chimera is a much higher level than her sibling. Chimera was one of a handful of new demons added as shadows in Persona 5 Royal that were not in the original game, and continues a tradition of using a modified model of Cerberus in 3D depictions. Chimera in Royal can be encountered late in the game, and its shadow form is known as Deformed Lion God. One of Chimera's most prominent roles was in Devil Children White Book, where the main demon partner of the protagonist, Masaki, was a young Chimera named Clay, similar to Rand and Gale from the newer Demi Kids games. Clay will grow and evolve throughout the story, and also appears in Demi Kids Light and Dark version as Kem. Defeating Masaki in Battle.net multiple times eventually results in being rewarded with Kem, Metakem, Neo Kem, and finally, King Kem. From its iconic design to its regular presence, Chimera definitely stands out as a memorable demon in the franchise, and it really proves that three heads are better than one. What does that have to do with anything? Nothing. I just wanted to say that all day. I got sick of waiting for an opportunity. And so there you have it, Chimera, the combined conjoined construct of countable craniums and combustible coughing. Did I leave out something you thought was important? Was I just plain wrong about something? Let me know in the comments below, and don't forget to let me know who you'd like to see me talk about in future episodes. That's going to do it for this episode of the Demonic Compendium, and I'll see you next time. But be careful while you rest that a demon doesn't take over your body.